I'm Cheryl and I'm a nutritionist based in Orewa. I specialize in weight loss and I've worked on the coast here for 12 years, but I've been always very open-minded with my approach to nutrition. I started doing low carb 23 years ago and through my learnings and my own research experimentation, it's sort of gone low carb. Then I found out about keto, really interested in that. And then in recent times came this idea of the carnivore diet. So of course I was really interested in that and have been following quite a few people overseas um, and experimenting with using that concept both for myself and with clients. But what's interesting about the overseas example is that normally the people you see are these real beefy, beefcake, 20 something year old males who let's face it, not too unappealing on the eye, but as a 40-something perimenopausal woman, I sort of sit there and think, is this way of eating relevant you know, to me with where I'm at in life? And that's why it was really awesome to meet Janet because she's a woman just like us. And, uh, and even better, <laughs> yeah, but even better, she's a Kiwi. And I'd heard about Janet through a lot of these podcasts from overseas people who were talking about this amazing New Zealand company creating these beautiful supplements, which of course got me excited to think, wow, a Kiwi. So when I met Janet recently at a marketing um, course we're both doing, I had quite a fan moment to realize that this was her. So I've connected with her and I was just, I feel it was a bit of fate. Um, and it was really exciting for me. So I'm very thrilled to welcome Janet here tonight to share her knowledge. So once we've heard from Janet, there will be time for questions. So if you've got a burning question, write it in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that. But otherwise, we're a pretty small group tonight. So I definitely want to make sure that at the time, you've got time to ask questions of how, you know, what, however this can help you. So we'll definitely have time for that at the end. But otherwise, let me hand over to Janet. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. Um, so good to see your beautiful faces on the screen. Um, I love talking to people about um, how you can transition into a, a really healthy way of living and only through my own experience. Um, I started the keto diet at about 55, I think. I'm 61. Um, and because I'm from a, um, a line of long living women, I thought, right, I don't, I want to keep my marbles. I want to keep fit and healthy. I, I want to have my, my, um, I don't want to have any inflammation in my joints. And that started an amazing journey where I, I was keto for three years and I, I, I noticed a big change. I've done um, raw vegetarian and pretty much every kind of diet that you can imagine. And so keto was kind of interesting because I, got, I was really enthusiastic about changing um changing my the way i was i was looking at food and not having a really high carbohydrate based um diet but more looking at low carb high fat and i still I had a quick question janet sorry to interject yeah. before you were doing this did you have an issue with your weight like your motivation was it purely health focused or was there a weight element in there as well I always had 10 extra kilos. I was all like, I'm um, six, I'm um, five, nine and a half. And I've always hovered around the 80 kilos. So I'm, I'm, I feel like a big bone, but I always had that extra bit of fat. And the keto didn't really move the extra bit of fat because I didn't, I was still um, carb addicted, I'd say. Mm. And, um, and then three years ago, I transitioned to, removing all plants from my diet and just doing animal based. So that was meat, organs and fat and eggs. And I noticed a huge difference that though that extra 10 kilos went and um, my energy levels went through the roof. I've always been really fit and healthy and always I've been in the fitness industry for years and um, always carved like at four o'clock. I needed to have some carbs to get me through the evening and this way of eating really changed my relationship with food. So I didn't actually need that carbohydrate hit at the, um, at the four o'clock. I felt it was like a really slow burn all day. And the other thing that was really key was I wasn't looking for food for breakfast. So I, my body naturally went into a fasting state at the end of my eating window the day before, was, which was probably about five or six. And then I wasn't hungry until one o'clock in the afternoon the next day, which was really a big eye opener for me. 
So that was just fueling myself with um, meat and organs. I noticed there was a question there that are organs mm -hmm. essential. When you're living on animal food, um, meat and fat, um, the general consensus is that there are things that the organs have that the meat don't. So um, that's why I believe that we need to supplement with organs as well. So liver, like liver is a superfood. It's not goji berries or kale or anything like that. It's liver from um, beef or chicken livers are just as good. Maybe not just as good, but beef, anything that's, that's grass fed, lamb's fry. So it's dense with vitamin B12, which is something that plants don't give us, as well as other things that help our bodies turn food into energy. Mm. Um, what else was I going to talk about? <laughs> Oh, you're my fitness. Okay. So um, once I started increasing my protein through animal, through, through meat, um, I found that my fitness levels were really easy to attain. So I do, I've been, I've been in the fitness industry for years and I've taught aerobics classes and weight training classes and all that. And I don't go to the gym anymore but I do a lot of resistance training on my own. So I use body, my body weight as resistance. And my body was just like, yes, finally, I'm feeling like my, my muscles have come alive, you know, and I'm, I'm feeling strong and healthy and um, a beautiful place to be at 61, like really strong, motivated. I sleep well. I don't have any brain fog. I don't have any, any joint pain. Everything's just really sweet. So I'm looking forward to another 30 years of strong, healthy living. Did you, yes. did you have those kind of complaints pr prior to that? Like compared to say when you were doing vegetarian or even on keto, were you still finding challenges with your Definitely. gut? Definitely. Always had achy something. Um, and I and I noticed as, as I was getting older, I had um, a real irritable, my irritable, the irritable bowel started and I was often in, on the toilet every morning after breakfast, like with gut pain and um, it was just awful. So that's gone. Wow, that's amazing. Pretty amazing. So, so it was really removing plants, that final step, I suppose, that's given you that some of these really, I guess, top level health benefits. Yeah, absolutely. And like I, and What's, what's happened is that I have become, like I was initially really dogmatic and like, this is the way to do it and everyone needs to do it. But, and I guess that's the learning, the learning bell curve that, you know, you just get so enthusiastic when you first find something that actually works. But um, now I really believe that if you're doing, if you're doing something and you're thriving, like if you if you're a vegetarian and you're thriving, then that's fantastic. But if you're not thriving, one of the good things that you could do is just eliminate all the things that are toxic in the diet, which is not just processed food, vegetable oils, but, you know, leafy greens and um, almonds and things like that would that create inflammation in the body. Foods that are sort of healthy um, are still quite irritant. And I know that you've had a journey with, um, with, a, with bowel issues as well. Mm. So, Janet, we talked about this when you and I caught up, but can you share with everyone, um, based on what you know about why vegetables, <laughs> the, you know, the number one topic, why is it that vegetables can be such a challenge for so many of us? Mm. Okay. First of all, if you've got a pen there, write Sally K. Norton down and, and Google her. She's done a lot of work with, um, with oxalates in food, and she, um, she had a She's got an amazing story of being able to heal herself by removing those things out of her diet. So we all know what gluten is. So gluten is, has been found to irritate the gut through um, um, creating leaky gut and, provide, and, and causing inflammation in the body. Well, the body's trying to heal when you're pushing um, toxic things from food into the gut. So that creates a leaky gut. Um, so there's, there's gluten, there's also lectins, which are from nightshades, which are, which are toxic as well to the body in large amounts, and, and oxalates, which are toxic to the body in large amounts. So oxalates come, um, are found in almonds. So almonds are being touted as a health food to get away from gluten, but they don't talk about 
how toxic they are in, in large amounts to the body through the through um, they create a leaky gut and then all the toxins get into the bloodstream. Um, ox, oxalates create um, a crystal in the body, and I don't know whether you're familiar with kidney stones. So, what happens? Like, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor, but this is just regurgitated information. When oxalates are in the in the body, they bind with calcium. And we know that calcium is really important for methylation and creating energy in the body and creating dense um, bones and all those other um, things that need to happen in the body to, to help us thriving. So when you've got oxalic acid in the body, which binds to calcium, um, that's when things start to go wrong and, and you get quite toxic. So, um, and we've been told that we've got to eat our greens and spinach has is really, really high in oxalic acid. Mm. So is um, dark chocolate. And I know it's quite sad. <laughs> and almonds. <laughs> yeah. So it's, mm. I really encourage everyone to look, go and listen to people who are experts in their field. And what we'll do um, at the end is we'll just put down a few people's names that um, I really love listening to because they're so full of information. And um yeah. yeah. And Meg's just asked there, so what would you consider a large amount? Because that's a good point, Meg. Like, and you know, it's funny you mentioned the almonds because it's, but especially with keto eating, a lot of the products are made with almonds. So if you're somebody who can't tolerate that, that could definitely potentially an issue. But what would you consider a large amount? Um, every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Having a bowl of salad every day sprinkled with with almonds and um almond bread like i i think in in, in changing to a, a diet that's going to um create you to help you thrive we think we have to get away from the mentality that i've got to have three meals a day and i've got to have bread and crackers and even if it's keto then it's okay but those things are, are not good for you if and I found that moving to the um, transitioning to the carnivore diet, my whole relationship with food changed because I wasn't looking for food because my body was, my body was now fully um, nutritionally balanced. I wasn't looking for, for any kind of any sustenance. And I know that there is a little bit of addiction for me with um, pastry. Like I just love pastry and I, and I know that. And I can give myself a pastry once a week and know it's not going to kill me, but I know that I've got a foundation of really, really good nutrition. And so my body's not craving anything because I know that it's getting everything it needs. And that coming back to the organ supplements, if I have liver every day, I know that I've got a foundational nutritional platform that um, is going to support me right through the day. And I'm not going to be deficient in anything and I'm not hungry. Gosh, it's hallelujah, been, ladies. Hallelujah is all I can say to that. It's been profound. It's been profound for me, it really has. So on that note, can you talk me through or talk us through, like what, what do you eat in a day? You've sort of said you just sort of don't eat to one and a very important question that Victoria's just asked. Thank you, Victoria. What about coffee? <laughs> <laughs> coffee has got um, oxalates in it. Yeah. And that would probably, probably be my only guilty pleasure. Um, because there is the, an argument with, um, with coffee that it, is, it, it does have its benefits as well. So um, I'm not really too hung up about the good and the bad stuff, um, but I don't, I don't reach for anything during the day generally to satisfy anything. I'll have coffee in the morning with my organ supplements, um, and then I'll, I'll boil some eggs for lunch, and then we'll have steak or um, lamb chops for dinner it's very boring I, my fridge is empty <laughs> so it's really easy yeah right so you don't do mayo or sauces or anything you just keep it just really salt. plain salt mm -hmm. because one thing with mayonnaise and sauce um it's got seed oils in it so seed oils is another another conversation around toxicity um, and I know that we've, we've, we've come out of a conversation in the past where saturated fat has been vilified. So saturated fat increases your cholesterol and it's going to make you die early. One thing about seed oils is they're going to kill you because they stop your mitochondria working. They're so toxic. 
They were designed to run engines in cars. <laughs> they were, an, uh, they were a, um, well, they are um, an engineering lubricant, mechanical lubricant. And in the 50s, um, in America, they decided that they were going to move away from saturated fat because there was a guy called Ansel Keys. You can write him down and, and look at what it, at his research. Um, he said, saturated fat is going to kill the people. So let's give them this fat. And another 50 years on, six years on, we've got increase in diabetes, heart disease, obesity. It's, and I believe it's all based on the lies that were told to the people in the 50s. So if you've got seed oils in your house, go and throw them out when this is finished. <laughs> they, it stops the mitochondria in the cell. The mitochondria is responsible for creating energy. And it, the, when you are, have a lot of seed oil from mayonnaise or and even bread has canola oil in it, um, it shuts down our mitochondria and we stop working, they, the cells stop working. But what they don't do, they can't use the fat. So the fat stays in the fat cells and gets, and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Would you argue the same? Obviously not for olive oil or some of the more, was it, is it just particularly seed oils or, you know, what, how do you feel it's about canola, that? It's yeah. canola, corn, safflower, sunflower, rice bran, grape seed, sesame. There's nine can't remember the other two. Yeah. I don't use olive oil either. I know it's got some saturated fat in it, but any fat that's um, liquid at room temperature is just is not good. Like if you if you're on a on a um, a road for complete health, then mm -hmm. chuck them out. Yeah, and I guess you know this is I think oh, um, what's interesting when we think about carnival. This is top level. It is really, and we're moving through the different options, and th that's what I love about it too. It's it's more than just weight loss. Obviously, it really is looking at these different, really top level health benefits that can come when we're really prepared to fine tune and mm. observe our bodies in a way that maybe we've never done before by looking at this really top level yeah. area, which is what excites me because there's always so much potential to take, you know, what you're doing to the next level, depending on what your goal is. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And now we, Meg was asking too, what about dairy products? How, what, what place does dairy have? I know in carnival, there are people with different opinions, but what about for you? Do you have dairy in your daily eating or in your plan? Um, I don't have milk only because I don't like it very much, but I'll have cream and my coffee, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yay cream in my bone broth as well um cream in the coffee and i like also like to use um I, I really believe that so this is another part of the conversation is new zealand farming industry if we can support local farmers and bespoke dairy dairy farmers who are farming regeneratively and you know where your milk is coming from um that to me makes more sense than going and supporting the big you know the fonterra because they're polluting the land. But that's another, another story. So I do have dairy. Um, I'll eat cheese as well. Mm. Um, it's not a, not, not a big one on my, I don't eat it every day. Right. And um, I think fermented, fermented milk is good too, if it's raw, and that's quite hard to get, but um, kefir and um, yogurt, all really good. Nice. And one of the topics that I know always comes up when I'm talking to people about vegetables and, and their digestion, which is something you and I have discussed, what about this concept? Because people always think, oh, but if I don't get the fiber, I'm going to be constipated. That seems to be probably, probably the most common concern that, you know, we need vegetables in our diet for that. Mm -hmm. So not that I'm asking this is about your experience, but even in your work and moving in the different carnival things, is that something that's discussed? It is absolutely because that's always the big question: Can you still do your bowel still move? Um, and there's I'm gonna I'll add the the research papers for you too to to put after this. Um, there's been a number of papers, a research uh, studies looking at fiber and um, the carnivore diet and what happened and and constipation, um, and the 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 outcomes have been that it has not changed if you remove fiber from your diet it does not change like when I transitioned I had a, I had probably a week without regular bowel movements and then everything kicked in again 
some people when they transition to carnival they have diarrhea so and it's all individual and especially if you're if you're aiming to heal your gut inflammation things aren't going to be the same as what you're used to so fiber is really irritant to the gut so if you've got a if you've got irritation in your gut already adding fiber is just not going to do it any good and a lot of the times people say we need fiber for um to help us um with our vitamins and minerals and vitamin C, that's not that important. Like if you're, if you are um, completely nourishing yourself with optimal food that doesn't include fiber, you are going to get all the vitamins and minerals that you need. And often when you take away fiber, you, um, your need for vitamin C isn't as high which is really interesting. Interesting. That is interesting. You know, mm. what you say may, really makes sense. I know for me with having IBS, right, a bowel that's already irritated, when I take away the fiber, that's when everything starts working. Mm. And it does, it goes against what we think, but this is the problem. Like I said, fiber is all very well if you can process it, but if not, and then what's the advice from the medical system? Oh, eat more fiber, have more, have your metamucil. It just makes it just makes everything worse. So it is really interesting how what we experience can go completely against what we've been told or what we think is going to happen. I think we panic also. Like if you haven't had a, a poo for a couple of days, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to bloat up and I'm going to be sore. But actually, I since I've been kind of I don't ever bloat at all. Not at all. So I'm not panicking about not producing, you know, a bowel movement every day yeah. but I do but I didn't used to you know so it's like now that I'm three years in everything's just really calm and really cruisy and I know if I've if I have eaten something that's irritated my gut mm. it hurts <laughs> yeah and could you talk us through you know how you transition like when you when you first heard about carnivore Meg's just asked that like was it an overnight thing or how did you, what, what made you decide it and how did you actually transition to this new stage where you're at now? I did it because I thought it would be quite interesting and it made sense to me because I did a lot of research. I studied, um, I follow a guy called um, Paul Saladino. He's a, the carnivore MD and he's like a walking encyclopedia for everything carnivore. So if you ever need information about it, go to his, um, his heart and soil Dot co and he's just got screeds and screeds of information so you could find anything that you need there um, and honestly it took a lot right. to transition because I increased my fat intake and going and switching from carb fueling to fat fueling it took me a long time I used to lie awake in bed and go, going I'm gonna die <laughs> I'm not gonna survive this it's terrible what Cause if, you, I, cause of what you <laughs> felt because of because of your thoughts my mind was just going Boo! Yeah, I, I just because my mindset was um, vegetables, five, you know, five plus a day and fruit and all that beautiful food that nature provides, apparently, um, how was I going to train? How, how could I not survive and thrive on this? And um, yeah, it was. And I think if you're, if you're going from a carbohydrate based to a fat based diet, there's a time lapse where your body goes. Okay, so I need because what we do is we fuel we we fuel ourselves differently, and the and the and the energy cycles are different. So if you're using glucose for fuel, your body um, your body uses it really instantly, and and we peak often with glucose. So if you're carb and you probably know this, I'm probably preaching to the converted, but with carbohydrates, you eat carbohydrates, and then it's like using um, it's like throwing kindling on the fire. So it, rushes in you've got lots of energy and then you crash and so you're looking for food again and I think that's the way we were you know if, if you think about the food guidelines there's breakfast morning tea lunch afternoon tea dinner dessert so that's seven times of eating a day where we're used to hitting hitting those peaks and troughs whereas when you're fueling with fat the body uses it like putting a big log on the fire so you're up there and it's beautiful so there's no peaking and it's just such a beautiful thing not to have your glycos your your insulin spiking and your and your glycogen glucose spiking all day. 
Mm. It's really good for the brain too to have that long, slow burn as well. So there's no there's no brain fog in the afternoon because you're fueled. You know, this it's all there. So, but it was a long transition. For me. And yeah, so did you just sort of slowly start cutting things out and seeing how you uh, found? I went cold turkey. <laughs> oh, so I, okay, so you just went cold turkey. Yeah, I think going keto was good for a start, and then just removing all the vegetables. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I guess from keto to carnivore, it is pro- pretty much, I guess, the nuts or vegetables that yeah. you're just getting rid of. I was a big nut eater as well, and mm. I ate a lot of cashews and almonds and. Um, one of the things that I didn't want to do in the future was I didn't want to eat anything that was that come from another country. I'm really passionate about eating local. And so if I can't pick it off the tree or buy it from the farmer's market, I'm not going to buy it and I'm not going to eat it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, it's so interesting. And what about... I mean, you've talked a little bit about farming, but I know... So just flowing on from... Tell us a little bit about... so. Obviously, you loved carnival so much that you decided to change your whole life and create a business about it. So tell us about that. We knew that eating nose to tail was, we, when I say we, I talk about my partner and I, we knew that um, nose to tail eating was really crucial so that we were going to get all the vitamins and minerals that we needed for um, thriving and, and being radical carnivores. And um, I looked into, we ate a lot of liver and um, organ meat, liver and kidney and tongue and um all those lovely things that animals provide wanted to be able to have it every day and I just didn't want to cook it so I looked to see how I was going to be able to get this and I noticed that the the companies that sell it sell New Zealand grass-fed organ supplements are in America and so that sort of led me down the track with um starting my own business and um finding where to get where to get the organs first of all we started off with a kilo of of liver powder 100 kilos no 10 kilos of liver powder and I said to Martin at least we'll have liver capsules until we die you know we'll have enough and now we are we are homegrown primal is two and a bit years old and we are we've now sourcing our own organ meat from a regenerative regenerative farms in New Zealand I don't know whether you've heard of First Light they produce the First Cross Wagyu and they sell overseas and all their farms are regenerative and it's all grass fed and they are an awesome company to work for, work with. So they, we're producing a line for them to go into America now, which is really exciting. And we're still just selling New Zealand and Australia. So I think it's really important to stay local. Mm. I'll show you my, my pot. <laughs> That's our logo. My girlfriend did the logo. She's done all the labeling. It's just beautiful. So that's our liver product. Mm, nice it's first light first light bovine liver brilliant and um, six of these a day will give you the equivalent of 100 grams of liver a week and it's so it's not much mm-hmm. but it's um a really good foundation so i know if i have my organ meat every day i know that i i have i'm not missing out on anything mm. so that yeah so discovering that we could do it in new zealand was such a blessing I feel like um it it was a a a business that was downloaded from God and I'm really really thankful for that and I've I've learned so much um and so what what has what has now has become a passion is supporting New Zealand farmers who want to transition to uh regenerative agriculture and being a voice for for them um yeah so I've met a lot of guys in the field who are who are transitioning to um, regenerative agriculture, which means um, they sequester carbon in the soil. They don't spray. They don't till the soil. There's a, a guy in the Manga called uh, his farm's called Mangarara, and he's um, in in the Wairarapa. His name's Greg Hart, and he doesn't have any um, fossil fuels on his farm. So he has a little electric bike, and he he calls his pasture. Um, standing hay and all his cattle um, he, he doesn't cut the hay he just lets the cows eat it in the winter time and it's just it just brought me to tears what listening to him speak because he was so passionate and so in love with the land and what he was doing and um, I'm just like you guys so rock you know just to be able to filter down into our food chain and to educate everyone in New Zealand to choose meat and food that's been grown by um, regenerative farmers 
and really put our dollars to support these people because they're so passionate. And then, you know, healthy soil, healthy cattle, healthy people. It's amazing. Oh, that's so awesome. And if you, so if you're having, if you're eating organs, if you really love it, you know, do you think you still need to supplement or obviously if we can access no. quality organs, you'd find just eating them? It depends. The thing that I've, another thing I've learned is about targeted support. So um, Western A. Price did some work in the 30s looking at indig indigenous tribes and what they ate. And he noted that the, um, the tribes would feed the people who had um, kidney problems or heart problems or brain problems, that specific organ. And so they've done studies showing that um, the organ supports the organ. So if you're going to eat, say, liver from an 18-month-old cattle beast, it's going to support your liver health. And so um, if you're going to eat brain, so we have a brain product as well, which is my favourite. It's that one. I've called it Ignition. Um, and this is calf brain only um it just the brain supports the brain it's high in omega omega-3 dha and epa so it goes straight to the brain and supports all the the neural the neurons and everything in there to help my brain work and 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 function fast doesn't sound like a moment <laughs> yeah i really noticed it works so so along with the um with the Western A price theories and, and looking at the studies, there's, there's a bit of work on what they call glandular therapy. So, um, and I don't know whether you've ever had any thyroid or looked at thyroid, th the thyroid that doesn't work or people who have got thyroid problems or thyroid removed. Yeah. So a lot of people take pork thyroid to support mm. their T3 and T4. Um, and my our mojo product which is our women's mix has got um it's the pink one it's got ovaries and uterus and um mammary and placenta in it it sounds pretty gross but women who are post postmenopausal perimenopausal have really found so many amazing changes like no no um um hot flushes with perimenopausal women and women who are trying to get pregnant I've had three or four emails but from women saying oh my god I've been taking mojo and I'm now pregnant and I'm so excited it's just mm. so I love the fact that these beautiful animals can provide us with optimal nutrition just I'm just in awe of it and it's just so cool to have this option too. You know, that's what I love that this is available you know supporting our local industry mm. and you know, like I said, when you hear about how wonderful New Zealand is from people overseas, you know, it's awesome that, you know, you're allowing us to be able to experience our own country, really. Amazing. Good, fantastic. And I, I remember when I was young, like having a lot of questions and not really having any answers. And I feel like this has answered so many of my health questions. Mm. What, about life bone, yeah. what about bone broth? I know we mentioned collagen. Like, what are your thoughts on those things? I think it's really essential to have bone broth, mm. whether you whether you um, make it yourself. I haven't really been very successful at it, um, but collagen and marrow, all those things are just essential for for us to function um, optimally. So we do have a bone and marrow product, which is um, just crushed up bone and marrow, and then it's freeze dried, and that's full of of calcium and um, magnesium and all the good things that are in bone mm. especially if you've got milk, um, lactose intolerance you can still get your calcium by taking the bone broth yeah nice hey um janet jennings just asked an interesting question about thyroid so she said have people reduced thyroxine meds since taking mojo she has hashimoto's have you had any feedback yeah. along that line um i have never pushed mojo for um for thyroid support I know that the thyroid needs B12 and um, I can't think of off my head what else it needs, but I know that liver is really key to help the thyroid process. We've actually bought some thyroid powder, which we're mixing at the moment. So we're releasing our thyroid products soon, only because I've had the loud people going, please, please, 
offer a thyroid product. Mm. Again, not being um, not being a scientist, I am just doing a small amount of thyroid powder and a lot of liver. And hopefully, people who have got thyroid problems are familiar with testing and know and know how much to take. Yeah. So yeah. watch the space. We'll see how that goes. Janine's just said too. Yeah. Um, B twelve, iron, zinc, and selenium. Yeah. That's that all. Yeah. All in boost. It's all in the liver. Boost. Yeah. Great. Something you said just had me give me a. Okay. So you're doing that. Oh, I had a question. What was it? <laughs> Vitamin C. Oh no. Anyway, I guess something you just said then doesn't matter. But okay. oh, that's good. So you're working on that. That was my question. So obviously you're really in tune with. You know, you said the other carnival people. Is it a very? I mean, I obviously there are a few Facebook groups, but how robust is this way of eating becoming in New Zealand? I have found so many people who are who are changing their health by switching to an animal based diet. It's not. I believe that it doesn't have to be forever. I, I don't believe that being in ketosis is, is um, optimal for long periods of time. I believe that if we can be if we can be fat fueled, like multi fueled, if we can fuel with carbs and fuel with fat, primarily with fat, and we can go in and out of ketosis, then we're going to then we're going to be optimal. So I I I do eat now. I do eat seasonal fruit, only that's come off a tree. I haven't don't buy it from the supermarket um, because I kind of like fruit and I know that, you know, evolutionary, we're designed to eat bright fruit that's fallen from the tree. Like what, what sort of early man wouldn't have gone, oh, that looks nice. I'll try that or berries on the bush. Um, I believe that we're designed to do that. Mm. I love that. I love what I love about talking to a real, you know, a person who's living this lifestyle is because often there's so many labels, aren't there? Like if I Google, what do I eat on the carnival diet? You're going to get, well, these foods are allowed. And yeah. this is no. So, And it's the same with keto and everything. We need to follow the rules. But, you know, obviously there are no rules. I mean, using this as a template, but it's about refining down to see what's going to work for you on your gut. Mm. And hey, you may have, you know, obviously everyone's got different gut needs. So, you you know, you can bring in certain things that, that feel right for you because we don't have to follow a certain label. No. I and I think really like important to, and we, we're going to, we're going to offer a month's, um, a month's deep dive into carnivore if anyone wants to join us and just do complete carnivore for a month and see what happens. My, I had a friend recently who, who did carnivore for a month because I was harping, she's on Mojo and she's and she, I said, why don't you just do this? And, and she's still carnivore after, I don't know, two or three months. And she's like, this is amazing. It's so easy. I feel amazing. And I'm just going to keep going. So right. I, my, I, 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 my offering is for, for you, if you're interested, come with us for this month and try it because what have you got to lose? Really? Only a few kilos. <laughs> few kilos. Isn't that I know. Awesome? <laughs> I pinned it to the ladies. I've said, look, and it was funny. I was like, we'll do a carnival challenge for five days. I'll do a little carnival challenge. We'll do a Facebook group five days. And Janet's like, at five days my ass you know she was like we want to see health results let's do a month I was like oh okay cool and I'm up for it definitely I'm going to be doing it and I, I mean you're so right like let's do it we're going to do this in July everybody so we'll be sending out information about that but it is I, I really think that, yeah I think I think to get to get the benefits just do it do it for a month yeah it's yeah it's it is quite easy <laughs> Is so what do you eat when you go out? What happens when you go out? Share us about going to a restaurant with Janet. What do you order? I would have a steak, <laughs> of course. Nice. My um, my son has a restaurant and he um, in Littleton, where I live, and he does dry aged steak. And so he also created this miso butter, which is miso paste in but mixed up in butter, and you just put that on the steak. It's so good. It is so good. Oh, that sounds delicious. Who are, like I just think eating steaks deli- it's beautiful it's delicious food <laughs> do you keep it pretty simple honestly I do keep it really simple yeah, yeah. nice and have a day off have a day off just it's not like if you're feeling like a, a crunchy apple or a piece of pastry I'm not should I be saying that to a weight loss person 
just do it. But oh. yes, but again, but again, I think it all. If you're doing this sort of level of clean eating, ninety five percent of the time, this is the thing. There would be no harm, of course, in introducing something like that, unless, of course, you had an inflammatory response, in which case, I'm sure you wouldn't do it too, do it. yeah, you know, too frequently. But you know, I think like everything, it's up to no one. There's no one who's gonna who's telling us how we have to do it. It's up to us. I think one of the things that's really important is to celebrate your greatness rather than celebrate your failures. And if you've done five days of beautiful eating, then freaking let's brag about it. Look what you've done this week. You know, I've lost a bit of weight. I feel amazing. I might have slipped up on Thursday, but I still feel amazing. You know, I think celebrating our greatness is really key to, you know, share, sharing your, um, your, your beautiful vibrancy to the world. Yeah, nice. Mm. And that ties in. I mean, we've sort of talked a little bit about the weight loss thing, but what I wanted to share with um, with you ladies too is that you know this this approach of using carnivore is how I've used it with in, in weight loss protocols and never done it for an extended period of time, which is why I'm really excited to get into this challenge and see how it feels. But for me, that's how I've embraced it is with to reduce IBS. And I found that cutting out veggies, um, I mean, I still have a little bit sometimes, but it's made a massive difference in terms of bloating. And that's what I find with clients as well. Mm. Cutting that out um, really does make a big difference. And bringing in carnivore days also is very helpful in weight loss, as I know some of you have experienced. Um, Even if we go from that lower carb day to then having a day or two a week of no carbs and being, it really, really helps on the scale so it is very effective in that regard so both for weight loss and also for health um and that's that's sort of what i've done and i think i really encourage people to experiment with that whether it is for weight loss and again it doesn't have to be that we all have to throw ourselves in cold turkey but experimenting for a day day or two and just seeing how it feels for you because that's what amazes me and i know meg you're the same we'll do this and be like you know I can't believe how good my gut feels. Like it, it feels wrong. We're not eating vegetables, and it, but actually, with from a stomach perspective, it really does. It feels. I always think it feels so good. It can't be wrong. How can it be wrong when it really does feel so good? If you think about how we've evolved over the last hundred thousand years, and and before that even, you know, we we have our guts haven't changed since then. You know, we were we were scavengers. Human the human ape was a scavenger initially and it was he scavenged bone marrow from dead animals and and so our stomach acid is so it's as acidic as a dog so we are designed to eat meat um and so through through human evolution we thrived on meat and organs and fruit from the tree and it wasn't until the in the industrial the agricultural revolution came along and they started not being nomadic and farming and growing grains. And back then they used to ferment all their grains to help, help with the gut. But, you know, I feel really confident that having it, eating an animal based diet is evolutionary sound for the human species. And, you know, I want to see people thriving. I want us to be, you know, getting into our and into the last 30 years of our lives with no with no gut pain and no joint pain and really learning to connect with each other because we've got this beautiful vibrancy that just is like coming out from our pores because we're feeding ourselves properly. That's